Tacoma Central Wastewater Treatment Plant serves customers in Tacoma, Fife, Furcrest, and unincorporated Pierce County. This plant works to receive and treat millions of gallons of wastewater every day, making it a valuable asset in need of protection. Ranked among the highest flood risks in the region, the need to reduce this danger brought about the creation of the Flood Protection Project. The Central Treatment Plant flood wall was implemented because within the last 20 years, the treatment plant here has been at risk of flooding at least two times. The most recent was back in 2009. The damage caused by such a flooding event could be detrimental to the environment. The central treatment plant receives and treats about 80% of the wastewater coming from the citizens of Tacoma. That averages around 20 million gallons of wastewater per day. And during heavy rain events, we can receive over 100 million gallons of wastewater per day. The project broke ground in spring 2014, and construction ran through March of the following year, coming in on budget and two months ahead of schedule. The cost to complete a project of this size came from two different sources. The cost for the flood protection here at the central treatment plant cost approximately $9 million. Six of those million dollars came from the Pierce County Flood Control Zone District, and the remaining $3 million came from the wastewater ratepayers of the city of Tacoma. Approximately 800 tons of steel was used in the creation of the flood wall. The flood wall is made out of mild steel. It is uh, approximately 2,500 feet in length from one end of the treatment plant to the opposite end of the treatment plant. And it is embedded in the ground approximately 15 to 25 feet underneath and with four to eight, six feet above ground. With any large scale project, there are bound to be construction risks. One risk associated with the project was building around an existing pressurized water line. We were able to carefully construct the flood wall around and below and above that 48 inch diameter water line and uh, didn't end up causing any damage to it. So we were very happy about that. Making up this steel barrier are pieces called sheet piles. The installation of each section was done in a practical and innovative way. A loader has an attachment on it which picks up the sheet pile at one end and then they have a template laid on the ground and it lines itself up and then it slowly vibrates the sheet pile into the ground to the elevation that they want. Three automatic floodgates used to control water flow were among the first in the state to be installed as part of the project. If we ever did have a flooding event here at the central treatment plant and the water started to come from the south, which is where it's expected to come from during a flooding event, the waters would first hit the south end of the plant is what's anticipated, which is where we have our three automatic floodgates. And those floodgates, as soon as water reaches the front face of those floodgates, they are buoyant and then they will begin to raise uh, all the way to their shut position and then protect the treatment plant from flooding. The sheet piles were installed at different levels to add interest to the flood wall. The lowest points seen in the steps are the actual design elevation plus one foot above predicted flood levels. Rustic art pieces were also added, combining form and function to this vital addition to the region. But the most important focus of the project still stands out. This was a very important project with respect to protecting the environment in Commencement Bay. So if this particular facility went offline, due to a flooding catastrophe at the plant here where we lost all electrical power and all of our mechanical equipment, all of that wastewater that I mentioned would no longer be treated before it's discharged into Commencement Bay and it would instead overflow into Commencement Bay in the form of untreated wastewater. So it would be very detrimental to the environment. 